Hello and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr Susan Oliver and I'm a scientist and this is Cindy Oliver and she's a science fan which is good because we are going to be talking about science again in this video. In fact, we talk about science in pretty much every video because our videos are all about going back to the science and seeing if claims are supported by science. Some people, though, make videos that deliberately misrepresent science in order to appeal to people who love conspiracy theories, which is quite a lucrative market. The only problem with this approach is that you have to start making more and more absurd claims to keep your audience interested. And a recent example of this occurred on the Joe Rogan show, where he was joined by Brett Weinstein and together they resurrected long debunked A's denial claims. Now, I have covered Joe Rogan and his kooky guests before on my channel, but I've never mentioned Brett Weinstein before. But it turns out that I have been mentioned in one of his videos. Are you familiar with Dr. Susan Oliver, Back to the Science Channel? She shows data that claims to disprove Dr. Campbell's data and his claims about all-cause mortality. Is it valid? I don't recognize her. You I know? haven't seen it. I, yeah. Sorry, we don't. We have not seen it. Um, Oh, they've never heard of me. I guess it's because they are cat people and not dog people. Just kidding. Of course, they've never heard of me. Most people haven't, which makes you wonder why so many people claim that I'm being paid by Big Pharma. Why would Big Pharma be paying me to make videos that virtually no one watches? It makes no sense. Of course, most things anti-vaxxers say make no sense. Anyway, this clip came from a person called Bad Stats who shares short video clips of all the kooky things that conspiracy theorists say, and I'll provide a link to them in the video's description. But anyway, back to the main subject of this video. Before I show you the nutty claims of Weinstein and Rogan, I'll just give you a brief overview of HIV infection and AIDS. As with all viruses, HIV can only replicate by infecting cells. The cells it happens to infect are CD4 cells, which are essential cells of the immune system. This means as infection progresses, CD4 cells are destroyed, leaving people infected at risk from other infections. Initially, the immune system can get the virus under control and viral load will decrease, but it can't be eliminated. And over time, viral load will increase again and CD4 cells will decrease until people eventually succumb to opportunistic infections or other conditions. Of course, thanks to antiretroviral therapy or ART, infection with the HIV virus is no longer a death sentence as we can now stop it progressing to AIDS. But that could change if the claims of people like Weinstein and Rogan gain traction with people who aren't familiar with the science. Let's have a listen to a few of their claims. After I looked at what Luc Montagnier had said and I read um, Bobby Kennedy's book on Fauci, was that actually the argument against HIV being causal was a lot higher quality than I had understood, mm. right? That it being a real virus, a fellow traveler of a disease that was chemically triggered, that is at least a highly plausible hypothesis. Who in their right mind gets science advice from a book written by a lawyer turned politician? But anyway, let's have a look at what Kennedy said in his book about Luc Montagnier. Duisburg's most surprising convert was Luc Montagnier, the man who first discovered the virus. At the San Francisco International AIDS Conference in 1990, Dr. Montagnier made a startling confession about HIV that was clearly against his own interest. HIV might be benign. Now, before we get into the claim about Dr. Montagnier supposedly changing his mind, I would just like to point out that he didn't discover the virus by himself. 
He discovered it with a female virologist called Francoise Beret Sanusi, and they both got the Nobel Prize for its discovery. But back to Luc Montagnier and the claim that was supposedly against his self interest. Here's a brief summary of what he said at the conference. Dr. Luc Montagnier, co discoverer of the AIDS virus, reported an unusual microbe may act as an important factor spurring age progression, and antibiotics attacking the microbe appear to help some patients. A small primitive microorganism called a mycoplasma may increase the killing power of the AIDS virus and thereby lead to patients' decline and ultimate death, he said. The work does not contradict past findings that HIV is the cause of AIDS, but may help explain why some people get sick quicker than others, he said. So he didn't say that HIV doesn't cause AIDS, and he didn't say that there was any chemical involvement. He said another microorganism may increase the killing power of HIV. And this obviously wasn't against his self-interest. If he had been right, it would be another great discovery for him. Most importantly, though, although he explored the idea further, when he co-wrote an article on the discovery of HIV as a cause of AIDS over a decade later, he made it very clear that the evidence clearly showed that HIV was a cause of AIDS. Mycoplasma was not mentioned at all. And we now know conclusively that HIV causes AIDS because we can successfully stop HIV infection progressing to AIDS through the use of ART. And when patients commence ART, their viral load decreases and their CD4 cell count increases. There's also ignoring a very important factor in AIDS, which is party drugs. That is the, the competing hypothesis. And for those who think that this is a preposterous um, allegation, you should look at this evidence. The evidence is surprisingly compelling. The evidence is surprisingly compelling that Rogan and Weinstein are talking bollocks. A number of studies have shown this is false. I'll just show you two. two. In this study, they followed a cohort of homosexual men for a median of 8.6 years. 136 AIDS cases occurred in the 365 individuals who were HIV positive, and none occurred in those who were HIV negative. 88% of HIV positive men used nitrite inhalants, and the incidence was the same regardless of whether or not they progressed to AIDS. Likewise, use of illicit drugs was similar in those who developed AIDS and those who didn't. They also compared CD4 count for those who were HIV positive with those who were HIV negative, stratified by use of nitrite inhalants. And as you can see, CD4 count decreases over time in those who are HIV positive, regardless of nitrite use. And doesn't decrease in those who are HIV negative, again, regardless of nitrite use. And there's also this study here where they looked at recreational drug use in HIV infected and uninfected men. They found no clinically meaningful associations between the use of marijuana, cocaine, poppers or amphetamines and CD4 and CD8 T cell counts, percentages or rates of change in either HIV, uninfected or infected men. So simple. With AZT, with AIDS, it was killing people. So now you have people dying from AIDS and you have this medication which Fauci in the 1980s was famously uh, quoted as saying is the only reason why we use only one medication is because the only medication that's been proven to be both safe and effective. Right. Where have you heard that before? Right. It was a total, it was, COVID was a rerun of the AIDS chapter with AZT. But the AIDS chapter seems even more terrifying because if the initial treatment was AZT and we know AZT kills people, you're taking someone who has a compromised immune system and your response to that was give them something that's going to kill them quicker and then say there's a giant crisis. 
And this is what Duisburg was demonized for. Yeah, uh, I agree. Duisburg was demonized because his incorrect views on AIDS led to a large number of preventable deaths of both adults and children. A well-known example is Christine Maguire, who became an AIDS denier after speaking to Duisburg. She chose not to take AZT or any other treatments when she was pregnant with her daughter, Eliza Jane, and campaigned strongly to convince other women to do the same. Eliza Jane died when she was only three and a half years old from pneumonia caused by AIDS. This is her autopsy report. Three years later, Christine Maguire also died of pneumonia. Whilst her daughter was an innocent victim of Maguire's denialism, at least in her own case, she willingly made the decision to refuse the medication that could have saved her life. Sadly, not everyone had this choice. And this includes 330,000 South Africans who lost their lives and 35,000 babies who were born with HIV because Duisburg convinced the South African government not to accept freely donated ART. That's why Duisburg was demonised. He has a lot of blood on his hands. But what about Rogan and Weinstein's claim that AZT was killing people with AIDS quicker? More complete bollocks. An open, uncontrolled study published in 1989 demonstrated that AIDS patients treated with AZT had a median survival time 4.5 times higher compared with historical AIDS groups who had not received the drug. And AZT was particularly effective in patients with fully fledged AIDS or specific symptoms associated with severe immune system decline. And AZT could also delay the onset of AIDS in patients who were just starting to show symptoms of immune system decline. And now even more advancements have been made. So we no longer just extend the lives of people with HIV with antiretroviral therapy. By using a combination of different antiretroviral drugs started early in the course of HIV infection, people living with HIV can expect a near normal lifespan. But if assholes like Rogan and Weinstein continue to spread AIDS denialism just so they can get clicks, there will be more unnecessary deaths. But enough about those assholes. If you'd like to look further into the data I've presented, I've provided links in the video's description. And please remember, this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked, shared or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And, of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee or little Cindy who's finally going to sleep a treat. We really appreciate your support. We will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future. So if you'd like to join the cool kids and stay informed, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.